welcome to Paper 8. My name is Rachel Terrio, and today we will be discussing metabolomics patterns of breast cancer tumors using mass spectrometry imaging. This study was ethically conducted. In this talk, we'll be discussing the primary result of taking mass spectrometry imaging, graph clustering, and multivariate visualization to achieve the visualization of cancer from metabolomic patterns. But first, why should you listen? Breast cancer affects one in every eight studied women. The current gold standard form of detection, which is analysis of tissue samples by an expert pathologist, is known to be both time consuming and to have high levels of variability. This can greatly impact treatment planning, especially for time sensitive tasks such as tumor margin analysis. Mass spectrometry imaging is seen as a potential solution for rapid breast cancer detection. Mass spectrometry imaging provides information on the spatial metabolite distribution throughout a tissue. Every pixel of these images produces a mass spectrum. Every peak of a mass spectrum corresponds to an ion. These ions can be mapped to metabolites and biological processes. In this project, we work specifically with desorption electrospray ionization, or DESI. This is an ambient, non-destructive form of mass spectrometry that detects small metabolites within the tissue. DESI works by spraying electrospray droplets onto a location of the tissue sample and collecting the desorbed ions into the mass spectrometer. Each location is 100 microns by 100 microns in size. Let's refer to these as pixels. The final result is a three-dimensional tensor known as a mass spectrometry image, or MSI. The first two dimensions of an MSI give you the pixel location on the tissue sample. The third dimension tells you the relative abundance of ions at that pixel location. Each pixel can therefore hold 1,000 or more values, making the processing of MSI a high-dimensional problem. As a result, dimensionality reduction is necessary. We chose to use non-negative matrix factorization, or NMF. NMF guarantees that all values are non-negative, it produces sparse components, and tick normalization, which is used in mass spectrometry, can be represented with the L1 vector norm formation. Let's assume we have a matrix X that represents the MSI. We reformat the MSI such that each pixel is along one dimension, and the second dimension contains the ion abundances. We can then approximate X using two matrices W and H of predetermined rank, rank 3 in this example. When multiplied together, W and H can approximate the matrix X, and they can tell us the ion patterns, or what we will refer to as ion signatures, that best represent the image. Let's take a look at the materials used in this project. We had access to nine tissue samples collected during a breast-conserving surgery that were flash-frozen and processed using the Priscilla 2D DESI mass spectrometry source and a time-of-flight mass spectrometer. The methodology will be multi-part. We will walk through a pipeline, beginning with multiple stages of dimensionality reduction and graph clustering to ultimately achieve foreground clustering. Then we will use affine spaces of clusters to produce a single cancer and benign metabolic space representative of the clusters from across the samples. Finally, we will visualize the data using a multivariate methodology. Let's begin at the top of the pipeline with dimensionality reduction and graph clustering. In this project, dimensionality reduction refers to the process of performing NMF on each MSI selecting ions from the top components, and reducing each MSI to the union of the selected ions from across the samples. This will decrease the number of ion abundances for each pixel. Dimensionality reduction allows us to perform graph clustering. For this project, we propose the use of sparse subspace clustering, or SSE, to find metabolic clusters in the MSI. Due to the complexity of SSE, we must use random subsampling. Therefore, we do this in clustering multiple times and use majority voting for final cluster identification to reduce variation. Dimensionality reduction and graph clustering are performed in multiple stages, the first of which is foreground segmentation. 
Recall in a DESI image, even background pixels produce a mass spectrum, making identification of foreground pixels non-trivial. We propose the use of dimensionality reduction and graph clustering to ultimately produce a binary mask of foreground versus background. The next stage is pixel clustering. The goal here is to identify metabolic clusters within the foreground only. Again, we use dimensionality reduction and graph clustering, but on only foreground pixels, to identify three foreground clusters. The next stage in the pipeline is to produce affine spaces of clusters from clusters across samples. We can cluster using a mean vector. In the two-dimensional example here, A and B are the mean vector of two different clusters. The point X would be classified as being cluster B because that is the cluster it is closest to. Now if instead we cluster using an affine space, this definition changes and X is classified as being in cluster A. Since the metabolomic patterns of breast cancer are quite complex, we decided to use this affine space representation for our clusters. The goal here was to produce cross-sample metabolite spaces. We do this by labeling each cluster as cancerous, benign, or other. Then we form a matrix of cancer pixels and a matrix of benign pixels from across the samples. Then we can produce an affine space from each of these matrices. Let's call them AC for affine cancer and AB for affine benign. The final stage of the pipeline is data visualization. The goal here is multivariate visualization from affine spaces. We do this by computing the distance of an MSI pixel to each affine space and assigning pixel membership to each space using that distance and the following equation. Then we can visualize membership by assigning each affine space a specific color and allowing for partial membership. Let's take a look at the key results from this work. We will focus on three samples. The sample on the far left is described as all cancer, with a fibrous band on the right-hand side supporting the cancerous tissue. The sample in the middle is described as infiltrating cancer, where the bottom half is cancerous and the top half is benign. The sample on the right is described as scattered cancer, which has cancer cells throughout the tissue and a small benign portion in the bottom right. NMF was found to be promising but insufficient by itself. In these ion signature images, or component images, where the top three ion signatures are visualized, we see NMF was able to capture components that can separate foreground and background and cancerous and benign tissues. However, the ion signature that does this for each sample differs. Clustering was also found to be promising but insufficient. The farthest left two images both show strong foreground background clustering and clustering of cancerous and benign tissue. However, the image on the far right shows challenges with se segmentation of foreground from background in the bottom right, and also challenges with foreground clustering, where the scattered cancer patterns seem to confuse the clustering algorithm. When we look at the affine spaces of clusters from across samples, we found the expression pattern of the ion signatures differed between cancerous and benign tissues. In this image, we can see how adding positive multiples of the first component to the mean vector changes the expression of specific ions. With cancerous tissue, we found it both increased and decreased expressions versus benign and only increased. This suggests more complex patterns in the cancerous space. We had decided to assign ions to molecules from the affine spaces, and we found that affine spaces capture biologically relevant ions. For example, the first ion can be associated with the citric acid cycle, which is an energy cycle in the cell. The last three ions can be associated with fatty acids, which are essential building blocks for cell components such as the cellular membrane. These are expected to show differences with cancer presence. Finally, we found that affine space distances can be used to visualize cancer. We see strong cancer membership as bright red and benign as bright cyan. Starting on the left-hand side, we see strong association with histology, where it is all cancer, and the right-hand side, which is the fibrous band, is a slightly duller red. Looking at the middle image, which was described as infiltrating cancer, 
We again see strong association with histology where the bottom half is cancerous and top half is benign. A metabolic difference is a mixed cancerous signal up into the benign portion of the tissue sample in a streak-like pattern. On the final image on the right-hand side, we do see a scattered cancer pattern throughout the sample with a strong cancer presence along the top margin. Overall, we see strong association between our metabolic distance maps and histology and some locations where metabolic seems to differ. When we looked at binary maps, which is done by associating each pixel with only the affine space it is closest to, we see an information loss, especially when mixed cancer patterns dominate an image, which showed no cancer detection in the binary mapping, but obvious cancer detection in the distance maps. Although this work is promising, there are many next steps we would like to take, some of which are a larger number of samples, looking at different tissue types, including different cancers, and using LCMSMS to get definite associations between ions and metabolites. Overall, what we have done is provided a proof of concept for the use of mass spectrometry imaging, graph clustering, and affine space distances to visualize cancerous metabolomic patterns. Thank you to our references. This work was partially funded by the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada and the Vector Scholarship from the Vector Institute of Artificial Intelligence. Special thank you to Nicole Morse, Emma Ritzy, and Tyler Mangai. Thank you for listening.